Hey y'all, it's Brittany. How is it going today? I hope everyone is doing well. Yes, I am uploading a video in the middle of the week at night. Um, it's not the weekend and I decided to do this because I had the urge to make a video. And the urge is prompted by some changes I did on my blog. Uh, for those who haven't looked at the description box below, I have links to a lot of my stuff. And one of them is this blog right here called BritBot.com. And here I talk about my journey uh, upgrading from a data center technician to a software engineer. So I detail about the projects I'm working on, the books I'm reading, things of that nature. But this past week, I've been uploading or, or posting new content that's different than that. And this post right here, which I posted on the 16th, explains why. And I want to post more career advice. I want to help out individuals who are trying to get a data center technician job, or maybe they're just trying to get an IT job and they heard about it and they don't know what a data center, te data center technician does, so they're looking for more information. Another reason why I decided to switch gears on my 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 blog and now with my YouTube channel is because I did, I got a message from an individual I had connected with on LinkedIn. If you send me a LinkedIn invitation and if you're not a recruiter and you don't look scammy, I'm going to accept it most of the time. So, you know, he's posting content. I'm reading it. Looks good. And he DMs me, and that's not out of the ordinary. A lot of people DM me on LinkedIn. And he, and he said, Brittany, um, I just want to thank you. When I was trying to get a data center technician job, I came across your content on YouTube, things like that, on your old website. And I used it, and I was able to get a job at Microsoft. I'm a data center technician. So I was like, oh, congratulations. I'm glad for you. All that good stuff. And so people have reached out to me on LinkedIn for that reason. And I just started thinking. I said, okay, I know I put in my first video when I, I said I was back, that I, that I wasn't gonna make these videos, but I can make these videos. I just know how not to run afoul of the forbidden topics I can't discuss since I am a Google employee. And one of those topics is this one right here, how to get a data center technician job. And I can provide general information. And that's why I want to provide in this video, because I know there's plenty of people who are looking for a data center technician job because they are pretty popular now. You've probably seen Sam Altman, along with Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle, and the, I think it's the CEO of SoftBank. They were at the White House, along with President Trump, talking about their Stargate uh, project, $500 billion. They're gonna have a whole bunch of data centers. Right now, they're starting out in Texas, but they kind of want to move out into other, other states. And, you know, you have XAI. They have their huge cluster, their huge data center down in Memphis, Tennessee. They're going to double that. That's what Elon is saying. They also need data center technicians. So you see these jobs popping up. They're popping up with Google, Microsoft, AWS. AWS is gonna, is building data centers out the wazoo right now in a whole bunch of different states. So I know there are people out here looking to get one of these jobs, or maybe they're interested. They're like, hey, what does a data center technician do? And I said, you know what? I need to go ahead and pull this knowledge, pull my experience and put it out here in a general form, <clears throat> excuse me, so individuals can use this information and get them one of those jobs. So even then, like I, I begin right here, I said, let's get you a job. And I know the tech job market is difficult right now. A lot of people say it's cooked. I don't believe that. Uh, I am working on, I'm doing a lot of research. I want to write a, a long blog post and then a video, you know, record a video talking about how the tech job market isn't cooked. It's just change. And this change is going to be long term. And there's going to be ways uh, as you know, experienced individuals in IT or newbies, you know, new grads, how they're going to have to go about getting um, certain tech jobs. But so that's in the future. I'm still doing a bunch of research on that. But yeah, let's talk about, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I put in this article. So video format, I know everyone learns differently. So if you love reading, I could put a link to this um, in the description box below. But if you want to just keep watching, go ahead. So this guide works for individuals already working in information technology or switching to this industry. By following these steps, along with putting in the work, you can land an entry-level role. 
So how do you get a data center technician job? First, you need to learn computer hardware installation and troubleshooting, because that's the first part. You got to learn computer hardware installation. You got to learn how to put parts in like hard drives, sticks and RAM, all that good stuff. And this is important because that's one of the roles daily tasks. You're installing hardware inside servers, like hard drives, memory, and you may have to upgrade a server. You know, a customer say, may say, hey, I need more storage, so can you upgrade my SSDs from 512 gigabytes to one terabyte? And so you got to know how, you know, the different sizes, you got to know they may be different form factors. Maybe they're going from SSD to now M.2, uh, or maybe they're going from an SSD to an NVMe disk. So you got to know the different form factors. You got to know about the different um, types of RAM, uh, the different speeds, all that good stuff. Um, and you also really know, got to know how to safely install and remove all types of hardware components. Uh, I touch a lot of hardware on my day-to-day -day job because Google has a lot of proprietary stuff um, and we have guides and sometimes I'm like I have never touched this before and I just go read the guide and I just you know put it in slowly and you know I'm like okay everything went well so you gotta be able to learn and then you know read a lot of documentation and do that stuff so that's one of the first things you got to learn and how do you learn this? You're probably wondering now. You're like, Brittany, you're, you're harping on this step, but how do I learn how to install and remove computer hardware? I want you to build a computer from scratch. And I know, I know I'm asking for a lot because you got to spend some money. But I want to tell you this, learning isn't free. To save some money on this step, you can buy a refurbished desktop computer from many different websites like Amazon, Newegg. You may even have a local computer store in your area that has a refurbished desktop or even laptop that you can buy for $100, $200, and then you could buy refurbished computer parts. And after you have all that, I want you to start installing. I want you to start you know, putting the pieces together, understanding how the motherboard works, the CPU, the, the you know, hard drive, the sticks of ramp, the power supply, you got to learn all that and you got to be able to feel comfortable installing it and removing it. Then I want you to start installing Windows or if you can't afford Windows, then you throw like a, a Linux installation, like a, a, a live CD. You can use Ubuntu, you can use Fedora, Linux Mint, just something easy so you understand what the operating system is doing and you can figure out, okay, are all the parts recognized by the operating system? Is everything working properly? Or did you forget to connect the cable? It does happen. Even with me, and I've been working on computers for a very, 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 very long time. Give me one second. My phone is buzzing. So the second part of this step, so this is a two-part step. Um, you need to learn computer hardware troubleshooting skills. Now, this part is going to be harder than learning how to install and remove hardware because there's going to be all types of servers, all types of computer parts, and I consider this an art. I really do consider that troubleshooting is an art and it takes it takes a good amount of time to learn. Now, depending on the job, you may not have to do much troubleshooting. You know, maybe a senior data center technician does that and they tell you what to do or they're going to work alongside you and see can you figure out what's going on wrong and and then that way you learn. But Another great place, um, if you don't have uh, a mentor, if you don't have a person you can learn from, YouTube. YouTube is fantastic and it's free. So you can type into the search bar how to troubleshoot a computer hard disk or how to know if the uh, stick of RAM in my computer is bad. And there's going to be thousands of videos. You know, there may be millions, but there's going to be a lot of videos. Let's just say that. There'll be a lot of videos that you can watch and you can learn. And I'm I'm, I'm just going to say it. Each person is going to have a different, they'll probably start out with the same general guidelines, but they're probably going to have different ways of troubleshooting this issue. And just take notes and review those notes and just learn as much as you can. Also, reading documentation from computer part manufacturers, that's a real good way to learn about, okay, what to do if I'm having trouble with this stick of RAM or what to do if I'm having trouble with the CPU. And then you can learn troubleshooting steps that way. Uh, but again, it's going to take some time. So we got that first part. You know, you got to learn computer hardware installation and troubleshooting. The next part to get a data center technician job, you need to consider certification. And why do I like certification? Because certification is a good way to learn 
the basics. And that's why I suggest the CompTIA A plus certification. It is an entry level certification that many employers. So even if you don't go from, you, you, after, like maybe when you start doing this, you're like, I don't want to do data center technician. I'm going to do something else. This A plus certification can help you get a help desk job, you know, technical support, desktop support. It can even help you get like even, well, no, if you're looking for entry level role, it won't help you get that role. It won't go down that path, but it'll help you get different types of entry level roles. And I will say this certifications, just like building a computer using refurbished parts, certifications cost money. And as of right now, um, there's two exams that you have to pass and each exam is $253. That's USD. If you are worldwide, if you're in another country, you're going to have to go on their website and look to see how much the test is in your area. So for let's just, you know, I'm just going to use America. So in America, you're looking at about a smidge over maybe $520 for both tests. And that's just the test. We're not talking about study material because there's books you can use. There's videos. Now there are free videos here on YouTube. Um, but, you know, study material from what I've seen online from my research, um, buying the book, if you get it from Amazon, you're looking at maybe 40, 50 bucks. Um, some libraries may carry it, but they may carry an older edition. You have to be very careful about that. And you want the most updated ed edition because, you know, older will, will CompTIA does archive their old tests, meaning that you no longer can take them. So you want to study the newest material. So some people do buy the study material from CompTIA, like their branded version. That's going to be the most expensive one. Um, but there's there's different, you know, there's videos, there's Udemy. There's a whole bunch of different ways to learn and pass that exam. Um, when I first got to IT way back in 2008, it is so long ago. Yeah, I got my CompTIA A plus certification back then. I think each test was, I think I spent a smidge over $400. And so, um, and that's when they were the forever, they didn't expire. Now they expire after three years, uh, but you can, uh, you know, you can continue get, continue, you can get continue, continuing education credits and those will keep your uh, certification fresh and it won't expire. I let all that stuff expire when they did, when CompTIA decided to get rid of the forever test and they wanted my money so I can get um, keep my certifications up and running. And by that time, I had probably about five years, four or five years of IT experience. I said, nah, I don't really need it. So yeah, but I'm just, I'm just meandering at this point. Let's get back to the final step. So the final step of getting entry level desk, uh, I was gonna say desktop, data center technician role. I'm not going to edit a lot of this. I'm going to edit some parts, but I'm going to leave the flubs in. So the final step of getting a data center technician role, you got to apply for jobs. And I want you to consider co-location data centers. I know you probably say, Brittany, but those jobs at, you know, AWS, Microsoft, Google, they look pretty cool and they pay a lot of money. That's true, but there's a lot of competition too. So Co-location data centers, again, I worked at one. I worked at Peak 10, but it merged with another company and now they're called Flex, Flex, Flex Initial. And it was a great role, you know? I had a good time there, I learned a lot, and I worked a third shift, I was by myself, but that's besides the point. But these co-location data centers, you know, they offer a, a broader uh, experience for data center technicians because they are not just for one company. They're just not Google. They're just not Apple. They're just not Meta. They have to offer, because they offer space for any company that wants to host their servers. They want to they want the, put their servers in a rack there. So there's going to be all types of servers you'll get to troubleshoot. It's going to be all types of customers you'll get to work with. You're going to have secure cages because you're going to have customers like Verifone that does PCI, they they do the payment information, so they need to be secured. Not everyone can go inside there, so you have to take this other training. So you have things like that. I know from experience because um, the data center I worked at had Verifone as a client, and we couldn't even, like I would run their ethernet cabling, so I would be underneath the elevated flooring, and I couldn't even go inside their cage to put the cable on the, you know, on a table, it, we just left it underneath the elevated flooring and we just told them, Hey, uh, we ran the fiber or I'm sorry, we ran the ethernet. Like you requested it's underneath the floor. 
uh, when you when you need help to get it to pull it up, please contact us. Yeah, I couldn't even do stuff like that. So I am getting off tangents. I like to tell stories. So where are some co-location data centers that I recommend that you should look for a job? I have a short list in no particular order. QTS, Digital Realty, CoreSight, Equinix, and Flex Flexion Digital. Um, again, check them out, see what jobs they have. I think all of these are worldwide, but they have many, many locations throughout America. Um, and go ahead, see if you have the minimum qualifications. I want you to apply even if you just have the minimum. You don't even have to have all of them. And, and the reason I say that is because I, I, I did some research while, while writing this blog post and I just, I'm just seeing jobs that are just sitting there. And if you got most of the qualifications, give them a shot, just apply. I, I, I had a person reach out the comments saying, Hey, Brittany, where should I apply? I gave them some, some places. Um, and they applied, I think they applied at QTS down in Florida. It was, it was one of those companies because they had some openings down there. And so, yeah, go ahead, put the work in, try to get one of these jobs. And I think you would be very, very happy. Um, it is a manual labor intensive job. I do have another blog post on my website that talks about all the manual labor you got to do. It may not be the job for you. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk about that in a different video because this video is already quite long. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, please put it down there in the comment box below. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, my profile um, URL is in the description box below. And thank you for taking the time out to watch the video. Uh, I really do enjoy making these type of videos. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do a little bit more, um, a few more videos talking about career advice. And I do have a couple of more blog posts uh, throughout the end of this week. So I think the last blog post I have that, that's going to talk about data center jobs is Friday. Uh, but I am going to go into next week. I'm trying to see how long I want to talk about this. Maybe I'll do two full weeks. So look out for that too. But thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.